practitioner spotlight today, guys. So we do this once a month. We like to bring on a practitioner that's been through the FDN course that has integrated FDN into what they're doing, and they come and they want to share their story to encourage you guys, and then also too just to do a little bit of uh, of guidance and mentoring too, a few tips from, on business and coaching and client management, all those things. So like to hear it from other people too, besides uh, just us mentors and read. But all right, well for this week, um, Mr. Dan. Walsh is on with us. He's from California. He's a 2014 graduate of the FTN course. Um, who actually was an EMT and is also a certified Western clinical herbalist. So he teaches teaches herbs, which is awesome. So he's got quite a background and a pretty awesome background to, to go into this work. So, Dan, we welcome you to the call. Thank you. Good to be here. Awesome. Good to have <laughs> like I said, I'm yeah. Really nervous. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> It'll be fun. We're just gonna just gonna talk and and get your story because I uh, you know I ask you a little bit about your story uh, from the beginning there. Um, you you've had a quite an amazing story here overall with your own health transformation. Can you tell us a little bit about how that went down? Yeah. Um, okay. So I was 35. Um, I had nine years in the military. I had got out of the military the year before that. Um, and I was an athlete, and I was taking a workout su- a supplement. Ironically, it was uh, it was made from ephedra, because um, mm. I'm an herbalist. That's why it's ironic, right? And um, yeah, but right. they were super concentrating it into basically um, speed. So um, it gave me a heart attack. And that particular supplement and the ones like it have been actually banned by the FDA because it killed a lot of athletes. Um, anyway, I survived it. I was in the cardiac unit for three days, and um, but after that, um, I my heart was arrhythmatic, so I had to have a, be on beta blockers. And uh, what I know now, what I didn't know then, was that I had been probably my whole life dysglycemic, so there was that component, right? Add that to it. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I had to be on. Um, I was on, uh, boy, a tenolol, digoxin. Various ones. They didn't work for very long, so I'd have to keep switching back and forth. And then that led to extreme anxiety. And so then that led to Xanax, and, and Paxil was my <laughs> drug of choice. And um, that led to GERD so bad that I had to elevate the bed. And it kept me up at night. And um, symptoms of IBS, those are there. Um, they'd come up, you know, um, randomly. And... Um, that was really uh, disturbing my life. The anxiety was the biggest factor because I never knew. I had to run out of grocery stores uh, with a full shopping cart. Uh, I didn't know when it was going to show up. So social situations were um, causing anxiety because I didn't know. I always left myself an out. So I wasn't committed to anything. Um, Meanwhile, I was working, you know, running my life, and I had kids and uh, slowly gained weight. By the time I was 44, I was 215 um, on four pharmaceuticals, and uh, the doctor had recommended statins at that point. Mm. And I told him that I was going to start working on um, turning it around, and he told me point blank, nobody does it, take the drug. And, um, you know, I really couldn't argue with him because there's there's truth in that. Um, But I did do it. That's when I started working on my health. I, I actually thought that I was I was going to the ER uh, once or twice a year because my heart would go into a fit and then I'd get it back out. So yeah, it was a, a tumultuous time in my life, and um, it there was I didn't feel like there was a way out of it. I just was going downhill. Hmm. What what made you want to shift? And it sounded like you were a fit guy and taking care of yourself at least somewhat. Um, when you're in your 30s there. So and I, I get people that, you know, I'm fed up with this, I don't want to do this way, but what, what shifted in your mind? Was there a, a single event well, that said, okay, I've got to make a change? Yeah, I had a dream <laughs> when I was 44. Um, it was actually more like a voice. I was, I was tired, I was just kind of dozing in bed, and I was somebody right in front of me. A man's voice said, you're going to die of a heart attack at 45. And I was 44, it was June. My birthday's in November, <laughs> and uh, it woke oh, wow. me up, and I went, well, i got to do something about this, 
And uh, somebody I didn't mention was, you know, uh, along with a lot of people, I was on a somewhat of a vegan diet. I wasn't eating a lot of meat, probably almost not. High carb diet, and that wasn't serving me, but I didn't know it at the time. Um, so I started walking two miles every day. I did start eating a bit of meat, not much, just a little bit, and uh, more vegetables. I did all the research I could, and then I found a book called The Herbal Pharmacy, and I read about um, Hawthorne Paris to control heart mm -hmm. rhythm, just kind of randomly. And so I started taking those, and I had a cardiologist. I'd gone through four, and um, he was very supportive, and not directly, but I told him what I was doing, and he, he would just say, you know, keep doing it. Hmm. And over the – it took me three years. Yeah, it took me three years to, to turn it all around. But slowly, the anxiety went away. I controlled the blood sugar, uh, and the heartburn went away. And then all I had left was those beta blockers, which were keeping me from losing that last 10 or 15 pounds. And I couldn't run. They're like a brick. They're like a governor on your heart. You know, they won't let it beat over 135, 40 beats a minute. So you can't really work out hard. So they shift your, you know, they hold your metabolism back. Mm -hmm. And then I used those Hawthorne berries consistently and weaned off. Now, so what happened was I was, I was feeling pretty excited about my health at that point. I knew I'd, I'd gone from 215 down to 180. My ideal weight's right around 170, and plus or minus a couple of pounds. So I was pretty happy with what was happening, and I, I told my cardiologist, I want to stress that, though. Excited about it. And I, I was determined I was going to go in there and push as hard as I could, still on beta blockers, right? Mm -hmm. And if I drop dead on the, on the machine, on the treadmill, okay. But he was there to revive me. So I'm confident. So I pushed and I pushed, and um, yeah. And this guy afterwards, he was he was looking at the results in silence, and he spent a couple minutes. I really appreciate this. And he turned to me and he said, "I think you can wean off your tunnel." That was the beta blocker I was on at the time. Yeah. Now, so I did. I started up on my hot thorn. Now, keep in mind, too much is not good either. Okay, so anybody listening, don't just go out there and grab hot on berries and start hammering them. It can have a, a bad effect if you take too many. So I, I just doubled the, the dose on the supplement I was taking. And um, he said half, half the atenolol every two weeks, and then in about six weeks you'll be off it. But that's not the way it really worked in reality. It took me six months. I was down to a chip, and when I'd stop the chip, my heart would go crazy. So I just kept with and kept with it until I, you know, I was off it. Hmm. And uh, several months after that, I was in the gym and I was doing my two mile walk on the treadmill, and I felt like running. And I was like, man, I don't weigh myself. So I went over the the scale and I weighed one seventy. I was like, oh um, my god, yeah. <laughs> several months after that, Brandon. I ran a 550 mile. Oh, wow. On the track. And I, yeah. <laughs> One of the scariest things I'd ever done. I was 48. Okay. Mm -hmm. 56 now. Mm. So that's when I decided but, to switch careers. That was, that was a, uh, that was a defining moment though, at that time period. Okay. I was wondering when uh, that was going to happen I'm with gonna, the herbal yeah, if the herb book was your first foray into herbs, or was did this come later on? Okay, that was. I had read a book about Lyme disease that fascinated me previous to that. Um, that really is integral in my work now. But uh, yeah, that was my first real foray into herbs. And uh, yeah, interestingly enough, so I, I thought I'd be a nutritionist, and uh, so I was looking at the schools. I thought I'm going to go to Berkeley. You know, that's a really good school, and I looked at their nutrition program and nothing, you know, I'm not bad enough in Berkeley or, but that's not what I wanted to learn. I know there was, there was not truth. I wanted to learn how to heal people. I knew that's not where it was. So I looked at a lot of different modalities and I started with the Institute of Integrated Nutrition and I did their health coaching pro course. Yep. And I started yep. coaching people. And then I, I kept looking and then I, I looked at a lot of things and I saw Reed Davis's video and, 
it just rung true. And so I signed up for the FDN course. And then the FDN course, uh, I was looking at the nutraceuticals and all the herbs in them. I was like, I want to know about more about that. So I signed up for herb school. And that's when I quit my career. I was a contractor at the time. And uh, threw it to the wind and, and did this full time. That's amazing, and not not that uh, I'm saying anything by saying this, but that that late in life, you know, it's that's a that's a yeah quite, quite an age to to make that big change. Yeah, it's huge, really huge, <laughs> especially from a financial standpoint. Oh, sure, sure. But I'm working that part out now. I mean, it's all coming together. Mm-hmm. I knew I'd get there. Yep. Yeah, you, know, you just got to yep. kind of make a commitment. So, so right now you've got uh, a practice where you're working with people, and you're also teaching at the school also for for herbology. Yeah, yeah. I run the field trips and um, teach several classes at the school. There's a there's a bunch of teachers. They like to have a good variety. Everybody's different. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a specialty within so the I, school there, or do you teach general things? Um, I like. Uh, well, yeah, I teach uh, male reproduction, so I'm really into uh, male reproductive health, and because that's you know key, we know we learn about hormones in FDN, and we can mm-hmm. see that uh, hormone imbalances, which you know are caused by dysglycemia mainly in most people, is, and, and food sensitivities, um, that is key. So I also teach cardiovascular health, which ties right into everything else too. You know, there are, you know as we learn. Um, we're one organism, so when we break it into systems, we have to be careful. We don't focus too much on one thing. We got to look at all of it, holistic treatment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So at the herb exactly. school, yeah, when I teach when I teach at the herb school, I always use the dress. I write it on board, and because it's oh. it's not commonly taught there, constitutional herbalism is taught, and that's really a powerful modality. Um, but it's easy for an herbalist to forget to leave out fundamental components like diet, food sensitivities, and dysglycemia. We have herbs that treat dysglycemia, but if you don't treat it from a macronutrient perspective, you know, you're putting a Band-Aid over a festering wound, right? Uh, yes. Eventually, you're going to have to amputate. So, yeah, right. so foundational uh, protocols are really important. I'm, I'm glad you're saying this is always a, a huge thing for, I think, everybody. You know, we, we get, especially when we start to learn about supplements and what's in them and the power of them, we ex- experience those things. Sometimes we forget about the other aspects of the dress protocol and how powerful they can be, and then you kind of get jolted back into reality. Like you said, you can, it's kind of a, it's actually where I started, too. I started more in the, in the the supplements, almost retail side, understanding what things did, and I tended to want to do a, a pill for every ill, but just with a natural form, which that's I guess right. better than the prescription. But you weren't really addressing the whole person and really foundational things uh, to begin with. So right. that's a huge point there. It's huge. It's it's real, and uh, I encourage everybody that's uh, that's new, and even those because I got to keep reminding myself, Brandon, you said that to me earlier too when we were talking, you know, you got to remind yourself, stay foundational and look at everything. And uh, that's a beautiful thing about the uh, Reed system that uh, he thanks me for talking it up, by the way, if you're listening to Reed. It's so simple. <laughs> it's, it's so simple and so brilliant. Don't take your eyes off any part of it. So when you write the acronym DRESS up there and you look at diet, you look at rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation, you know, every single letter represents, you know, books have been written about everything, right? Mm -hmm. So it's Mm -hmm. simple, but it's complex. But you take the one, you take the person you're sitting in front of or you're talking to on the phone and you apply the principles and how it will work for that individual person. But you have to address every single one of them because if you don't, you're going to miss something. And then you're going to be held back. Yep, yep, exactly. And you don't always know what's going to be the biggest boulder to remove. You know, diet might be right. 70% oh, of yeah, their yeah. issue, or it could be 25%. So you really don't know. Yeah. That's why, yeah, you have to be thorough and complete. Yeah. And Very listen, much so. Because, uh, yeah, people will give you a clue without realizing it and listen to everything they say. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
asking questions is a pretty powerful tool, isn't it? Yes, it is. Asking and listening. I always ask, I always ask myself this question going in uh, to an initial intake is, uh, what does this person need? What's their goal? Yep. All yeah. That. For instance, mm -hmm. if if you have diet, if you're looking at diet, and there's you know there's uh, a lot, uh, there are certain diets. I uh, also our protocol sheets for the diets are super helpful. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different names for different diets, right? And people market them and they write books about them. Um, it's summed up pretty well in our in our protocol docs. Those little diet sheets uh, take the auto move. Paleo, for instance, um, or the general healing diet. That, in general, works. It works. I could generalize and say, you know, that works for everybody because you're taking away all the likely foods that are triggering an immune response, right? Therefore, inflammation. And it's controlling blood sugar. So that's going to work. So you got to kind of look at the person and make it work for that person because psychologically, that person is maybe grappling with that oh, I don't like eating meat. So how are you going to make them <laughs> would get available amino acids, which may not be available to them because they have leaky gut, from a vegetable? It's not going to really happen. So you've got to integrate in some really good protein sources for that person who has this psychological block around it. That used to be me, by the way. Mm. So what made you change over from more of Vegetarian oh, diet. Yeah, that's a great me. question. I, I remember that. Um, what made me change was, um, so I had been through the FDN course. I think I might have been finishing up. And I was telling a friend about food sensitivities. Now, I'd done all this healing, this great healing work already. And I was, uh, and I was really happy, except I still had knee inflammation so bad that I had three knee surgeries. You know, I'd been diagnosed with osteoarthritis. So, and the, knee, the surgeon was great. You know, I was spinning on the bike six days after surgery. But over the next few months, the inflammation would come back. And they looked like rheumatoid arthritis. And basically, that's really what it was. So my knees were swollen. And they'd get tight. So I was, I was still taking ibuprofen to manage that. And um, so I was telling a friend about food sensitivities. And... Uh, and she pointed at my knees, and she said, what are you eating that's causing that? And I was like, what? right? The, you know, it's easy to apply this stuff to gotcha. other people. Sometimes it doesn't yeah, hit gotcha. all. And I was like, of course. But, you know, I hadn't transcended from the point of belief to the point of knowing it. There's that. There's that component. And I know a lot of people are there. You know, you have to see, oh, yeah, this may work. You haven't really seen it yet. And... Once you see it work, you become a knower. So what I did was I thought about it for several days. What am I eating? Well, what I was eating was peanuts. I was eating a lot of peanuts because peanuts are high in protein. They're the highest uh, nut in protein, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow. So I cut out all nuts. And within one week, my knees were, the inflammation had gone down. I was walking around. I was like, oh, my gosh, you got to be kidding me. So simple. <laughs> And my whole life I've been dealing with this. <laughs> but because I had a bent toward veganism, I chose nuts, right? So it turns out I had a sensitivity to them, and they were causing major problems. Not only the inflammation, but brain fog, which I didn't really know at the time. You know, if you have inflammation in one part of your body, it's affecting the brain too. Sure. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, my, I, I'm not exactly the same story, but kind of similar for me, to me. I was eating more vegan, vegetarian for a while, and uh, kind of like I said, knew it really wasn't serving me, but I just thought that this is what you were supposed to do. Everybody was supposed to eat this way. And so I kind of got yeah. into that mode, and then um, I think, I believe it was metabolic typing was my big my big shift. So I took the metabolic typing right. test, protein type, and it's like, okay, well, um, you know, if I want different results, I better make a change. So remember eating red meat for the first time in, in quite a while and just felt like a million bucks. I was like, wow, okay, there's uh, there's something to this. And so I got a little more balance back to my diet that way, and obviously I've, I've tested multiple times as a protein type, and that's probably where I'll stay. 
but it all makes a huge difference. Diet is it's gigantic, especially those the, the macronutrients ratios and yes. the protein and all that you have to have, and then also inflammatory foods. It's, it's how we look at diet, and it uh, it works. It does. That that is foundational to every mm-hmm. protocol. Really mm-hmm. is. Yeah. I, I believe. Oh yeah. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. And once you figure that component, and people think paleo, they think you know meat, 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 but really it's eighty percent vegetables. Mm-hmm. You're doing it right, in my opinion. Yep. It's eighty yep. percent um, vegetables, mostly raw, easy to digest, leafy greens, large variety, huge amounts. And what happens is your body actually. You know, if you've if you've been in a high carb diet, sugars that uh, eating vegetables doesn't do anything for you. But after you've been on the paleo for a while, eating a large amount of those leafy greens, you actually get energy from them. Mm-hmm. You can know, stimulate mm-hmm. them, and, and they detoxify you, they cool you down. You know, with, what that means is they stop inflammation, all the thousands of phytonutrients in them, and um, yeah. Everybody's got to figure it out for themselves eventually. <laughs> Make some yeah, changes right. and just see. It just that's, right. it's, that's that's I guess to me. I don't know if you agree, but that's that's usually one of the biggest challenges working with clients is is the dietary side of this, uh, making those changes. You kind of see that too. Yes, I do. And here's what I would suggest with people because it was challenging. That's the biggest challenge because people are so dogmatic about it, and so when I ask uh, practitioners who are having that challenge um, to, you know, release dogma around it. You know, what, once you see things work, you become, like I said, a knower. So you can transmit that knowing to your clients and say, look, what you're doing isn't working, right? Be straightforward and, and I'm asking you to try this for 90 days, Right. And and then you're going to adjust it because you don't want to be on a strict diet longer than that. Then you start adding foods in one at a time. You do a, a, a complete gut healing protocol and a glycemic controlled diet to stabilize everything, dampen the inflammation, stabilize blood sugar, boom. And then they'll see results and they're going to go, oh, oh, so many people do that. Just like, oh, my gosh, you got to be kidding me. It changes their worldview. And that's the problem is it's challenging people's worldview. Because we've been hammered, especially people over 40. You know, we were taught the high-carb diet, um, vegan is going to make you live longer and it's healthier. But really, it's caused a lot of problems. And, it, you know, something else they taught us, which is interesting, uh, they taught us the fake food is going to save us from the real food. Margarine, right? Mm. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Butter's bad, margarine's better. Oh, it's a good line. I like that. <laughs> Fake food save yeah. you from the real food. True. Uh-huh. That's true. A lot of a lot of reprogramming to go on. There is. And it was all based on science, right? No, it wasn't. So it's how the science is interpreted. And you still gotta look at that, right? What am I looking at? What how did they actually reach this conclusion? Um, what what I what I've come to notice is there's what we learn and there's what works. And that, mm. that is really a little bit different for every person, and that's where you really have to dial in with your clients and work with them not only from the physiological level but the psychological level. What are they willing to do, how much, and uh, how fast? Mm-hmm. Also, I find the, mo- the, you know, the worse off a client is, the more compliant they're going to be. Because many people that come to me have been to a lot of other people already. So that's... That makes it easier, actually, to say, look, these things didn't work. Try this and just hammer it in, like, try this. You need to do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you, you prefer the challenging cases, then, or the people that have been to I do. a lot of stuff? I do. I do. I really do. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of autoimmune, um, Lyme, um, neurological issues of unknown origin. Had a couple of those passed to me by MDs. Um, mm-hmm. One with... Um, that was having seizures. I was able to stop the seizures in a um, couple of days. Um, yeah, just and that turns me into an, uh, a believer slash knower also because with those kind of cases, you really got to go in and saying I don't know anything, but these are this is what I'm seeing. This is what I think is happening, and if it if it works, great. If it doesn't, then um, adjust. You know, do something else. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Huge point right there, Dan. That's awesome. Is what you said. You know, I like that. Go in and without necessarily some preconceived notions, see what the tests are showing, right. what the person's showing you, and then I agree with that next part too. Is that try something. You know, pick a direction. Go with what you've got. You know, between what you have as far as the data goes, what your intuition says, what your experience shows, yeah. what the client's telling you, what they're feeling, all those things together. Pick a direction. Go that way and see what happens. Well, we we can't. There's yes. no guarantees, but we have to try something, and then, like you said, yes, we do. make some adjustments along the way, and make sure the clients know that there's going to be some adjustments. That's just how this process goes. And but we can do this together. We can get there together. That is correct, and that that great, Brandon. Because um, yeah, this isn't. Uh, I'm not giving you a pill that's going to fix it. You. Mm -hmm. This is what is we call it the opt-in. You have to do this on your guide, and we're going to do it together, just like you said. And right, it's going to be an adjustment period. Now, a lot, a lot of times you see res profound results really fast, um, and that's always great. And sometimes, you know, sure. it takes a little while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, do you have a certain? I mean, I kind of talked about people that you're kind of drawn to. Is there a certain age group that you notice is more commonly come to you? And um, ask no, for help? I have people from. 22 years old to uh, 72. Mm. And so there's no age. Uh, women, I have mostly women, they're, you know, they're more apt to really buckle down and take care of their health. Men are less communicative about it. They're, um, and they're like, okay, yeah, I'll try it. And um, that's what I've noticed. Um, mm. Some guys that are into, you know, that are athletes and into health, those people are going to listen to you. But mm -hmm. your common uh, working man doesn't take the time to really focus in on their health until things get bad enough. Like me. That was me. Mm. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what I've gotten good at is um, I had a fun instance. Uh, for instance, I had a client recently who um, uh, wouldn't, do the protocol. He wouldn't eat the meat, and he was older than me. And um, and he sent me an email and just said, "I want to do it." And I was like, "How am I going to respond to that?" And I just told him I was disappointed, and that all the subclinical signs that I see, what up till now, I said, "This is you know, this isn't going to work out good for you. It's just going to get worse." And so I came at it from that perspective, a little bit of you know scare tactics. I know. But I'm telling the truth. Yep. I'm telling him what I see. And um, boy, you know what? In the, the next day, he said he had a dream. And he started eating meat. And he went on a paleo diet. And within a week, he was feeling fantastic. And now he's so on board, he's referred several other people to me. <laughs> <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a tip for you guys out there. There's one way you can handle that uh -huh. response because you're going to get that sometimes. Yes, you are. Yep. Yep. Hmm. And hope for the divine intervention to say, "Hey, right, yeah, <laughs> do yeah, this. Yeah, Go this direction." Every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so, so are you working both combination of of FDN and and the herbalism together? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a Everybody? powerful combination. Yeah. Do, do you do you make yeah, up your own um, blends and stuff like that, I, or herbs, or do you? I do. I make my own medicine. Okay. Yeah, I uh, have a full apothecary. Um, we're negotiating a space right now. Um, I don't want to say where because it hasn't completely been confirmed, but it's going to be somewhere over here. I'm in Walnut Creek. Um, we're going to have a brick and mortar clinic with uh, available a full service apothecary, so I can make custom formulas. And I'm currently um, filling orders for other herbalists and mentoring them, helping them with their clients and giving them advice on formulas, custom formulas for people. And on my website, which will be coming, opening in the next few days, OptimLevel.com, I'm actually going to have a button for FDM practitioners, too, um, who want formulas. So, Oh, okay. That's OptimalHerbal.com? With a code for a reduced rate. On the, what's that? You said OptimalHerbal.com. OptimalHerbal.com, yeah. Yep. Okay. Herbal. Oh, excellent. So I'm into cool. whole food... You know, no weird stuff. What I found is, um, uh, you know, there's it's basic 
strong, as strong as I can make them, tinctures, which when you buy, they're usually the ratios when you buy in a store are one to five, mine are going to be one, they're all one to three. So I make them, um, or stronger than that. So they're very powerful, so you can put um, many herbs in one formula depending upon what you're seeing with the person, you know, to support the liver, to support the brain, to uh, dampen the immune uh, system, or modulate it. I'm in an autoimmune condition uh, to treat the gut, uh, specific formulas that are individual. Mm. So are tinctures, you think, better than like a capsule? That's okay, for people, for people with, they're very convenient. They're absorbed readily right through the, the, the tissues in the mouth and in the stomach. And so, yes and no. For somebody with digestive issues, absolutely, because they don't have to be digested. Really absorb, and we can extract the constituents. Some are water soluble, and some are more soluble in alcohol. For instance, curcumin from turmeric. If curcumin is about 99.7% um, soluble in ethanol, zero in water, and somewhat in fat. That's why, like the traditional Ayurvedic way to take it is in milk, right? Some people are milk sensitive, though, very sensitive. So, so a tincture is the best way to take it, in my opinion. So you, some people put it with pepperine. You know, you'll find the supplements with pepperine in it because pepperine opens the junctures mm -hmm. um, so that it absorbs. But do you want to give that to somebody with leaky gut? Mm. <laughs> right? Exactly. So, yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. You don't. Uh -huh. I always felt there was something to tasting the herb. I don't know if that's something I just heard somewhere, but like the taste of the herb versus like a capsule where you don't really even taste it at all. To me, there was some connection. Right. I felt like maybe it was psychological, maybe it truly was biochemical. It seemed like it worked better when I did, I could taste a, a, a tea or a tincture. Yeah, we call that organoleptics. Okay. So when we see an herb, we look at, we look, uh, smell, taste, feel. We feel the power in it. We can tell if it's a, a good herb, if it's, uh, you know, Rather than an old one that's been sitting around for two years and lost yep. its, you know, a lot of its volatile oils in its medicine. Um, so, no, that's real. And then when it comes to bitters and digestive formulas, there's a European tradition called, you know, the bitters principle, where if you stimulate the bitter receptors in the back of the tongue, it stimulates pepsin and um, pancreatic enzymes and bile. So it helps your digestion, just the bitter taste. With that said, you know, we can put uh, berberine plants in it and help um, tone the mucosa in the stomach and the intestinal tract and also suppress bad bugs like H. coli and other bad bugs that might be living in somebody with SIBO and the upper intestinal tract. Hmm. Hmm. So you can put nice combinations in there depending upon the person. Yeah. And they taste, mm -hmm. they taste great. Bitter but good. Yeah, the bitter tradition has been around a, a long, long time. I know, even back in, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, even Germany, 1800s, and before that, I'm, sh I'm sure, but like commercially marketed, yeah, there's, you know, there's several brands out there. So bitters are something we kind of forget about, uh, I guess because it is, yeah. doesn't always taste all, all that great. But So, um, hmm. We I'm just amazed that, it, that, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everybody wants sweet, but we need to really uh, develop the, the sour and the bitter receptors. And it really helps the digestion, like you said. There's something to that. And, it, you know, the taste, yeah, is wonderful. Sometimes not. <laughs> but, right, true. Uh, That's true. Yeah, sometimes medicine's medicine. And you have to right. give somebody something that doesn't taste good. Right, right. Well, herbs, I, I think you can back. I know diet was an important thing for me, but herbs was some of my first, my first lab, my first things I started to learn about in the natural realm of things, and I just always have a right. connection back to that and the smells or going into a, an herb shop of, some, a shop of some sort. You just smell those different smells of the comfort that's there. That's where I started to have my first healing experiences. So those tastes and those smells, they, they bring you back to that time in life where yes, you had, had hope. Right, well, the... the um uh, sensory perception of smell is linked directly to your hippocampus and your memory. Mm -hmm. so that's interesting you say that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what were your favorites? Agreed. Favorite herbs? Um, yeah. But that, actually, the, the line that I was more familiar with was, was Dr. Christopher's line of herbs. Oh, my gosh, I love Dr. So, Christopher, yeah. 
So, so his line. So there was, um, I guess there was, uh, there was one. There was a, rel a relaxing form. It had like valerian and skull cap and some of these. And their anxiety was a big issue for me. So, um, some okay. of those, more of those relaxing herbs were very, very. Yeah. The taste it's of those. Nerve. Oh. Nerve, okay, exactly. So, I'm not, I'm not as schooled as you are. So it's cool to learn. But yeah, those for sure. Um, there's some you know, digestive things. So um, he had a. It's very similar to our lower bowel formula that uh, Ultra Life um, carries. So the, so the uh, turkey rhubarb and the, I think maybe there was a little bit of senna in there. Some of those formulas there, those those tastes. I always tried to get the tinctures. I felt like that was better. So either, I guess in alcohol or sometimes they were in glycerin. But some of those tastes just just kind of hit the spot. You know that was some. I think the first cod liver oil I ever took was was a not a capsule, but was like a liquid form. So I remember the taste of that yeah. cod liver oil and the and the peppermint or something that was with it. So all those just kind of came come together, and I still like to have the the taste and the flavor of things. Nice. Funny you mentioned yeah. mention Dr. Christopher. I have his books in right in front of me. Okay. Page, but <laughs> so natural. All right. Yeah, he's one of my yep brilliant man. Yep. Mm hmm. Indeed, now it's a uh, it's amazing. They didn't, they didn't help with the lab testing and things that uh, we have, but now we know no. what these herbs are doing to the body, and, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how they figured all that out. That's uh, that's got to be a miracle there to have how that wisdom so that passed down. <laughs> <laughs> mm. okay. mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I, I, yep. it, there was this intuitive bent, but then there was the same thing like if somebody picked hemlock for, and tried using that, which is a toxic <laughs> plant. <you> know? <laughs> yep. yep, right. Exactly. So, <laughs> people sacrifice for us lots of ways. So, <laughs> right. we're, thankful. we're thankful. Well, on the business side of things, a little bit. I, I like. I love the herb. Love to talk about the herbal side of things. I know that's a passion for you. But on the on the business side of things, for us out there listening, for graduates and for trainees. So, what are some of the the tips you kind of have there for us as far as you know? I guess business, but also too just client management, that sort of thing. Client management. Okay. So. Um Let's talk about client retention first, okay. uh, which is part of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so tips I give people is, uh, is you know, before you go in to sit with somebody or, or you're on the phone with them, because I do a lot of phone too, um, you know, sit with yourself and get solid in what you know, right? You know what you know. And if somebody asks you a question and you don't know it, just tell them, I don't know, but I know where to find the answer. Um, don't let it deter you at all. Just keep on going. And because we can't possibly know everything as humans these days. There's so much information out there. And people come up with some strange questions. Or they come, you know, with ailments you may never have heard of. Um, mm -hmm. But sticking to the foundational protocols, we know that they will get better. Okay? Just have that, that knowing in you and transmit it to the clients. Now, the next biggest thing is uh, check in with them weekly by email. Now, that can become overwhelming, but what I do is I let people know, look, email is, for me, it's a non-formal way. It's one step above texting, but I don't, I don't want people to text me because that would be overwhelming. But email, I want you to check in every week. That's part of, you know, that's a requirement. It keeps them on board. It keeps them feeling held by you. And because they have questions, they're going to have questions, especially the first month. And um, then you can you know, give them advice, say, try this, try that, take this out, do this, whatever. But um, do regular email check-ins. And, uh, yeah, and then as far as uh, managing, um, I use the – so I write I, – first I used the, the computer 100%. And – it's it, for me. It's I, I don't like that. I like to write. So what I've been doing, I, I organize everything kind of like how the FDN set it up in client files. I really like that. That keeps me organized. I, I, it was a really good tool for me, and I still use it. But the way I do it now is I write down everything during an intake. Then I photo, um, I scan it, I scan it, and I put it in the file. And that way, I don't have to rewrite it. Oh, smart. That's how I do it. Or it's just for me. Ah, good. Yeah, and then good I have an ongoing record. Yeah. And keep track of every interaction. Because, boy, it'll become overwhelming fast. 
at first you have a few clients and you know you know everything you know everything about every person but then, but then that that ends and as you get more and more clients you have to have those records so you can pull it up really quick and remind yourself yeah. of what's going on with that person yeah and then yes, you know, uh, yeah, it's all there yep definitely attest to that get your get get some kind of system set up from the beginning you know if you can think mm -hmm. to the future of oh I've got five clients now it's going to be imagine yourself with 100 or 200 clients what would you do? Right. What kind of system would you want? And try to, you know, yeah, oh, we have expenses and we have to be smart about our overhead. But, yeah, have a system set up where you know it's, it's expandable and scalable and you can use it in the future. But yeah. you write everything you down. down. You, you will forget. <laughs> yes, you will. Yeah. And, and start now. Do it now. If, if you're a new practitioner, do it now because I did. <laughs> Boy, I had to play catch up big time. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I like I like what you said too there, um, just about staying in touch with them, also, and that's a, that's a big big part of what we do. I think would, that differentiates us from other practitioners that it's not just her, even a natural practitioner. I take this, and you know, I'll talk to you in six months or three months, or try this out. It's just there's a there's a taking a person from step A to step B to step C, like you said, with their journey, whatever they have, and it's just you really have to take their hand and kind of go go with them and just teach them and show them and so if you're not in contact often enough uh, people can fall off so yeah and people have different ways yeah. of doing this also some people don't want to do that much hand holding but you can and it's okay if you that's your if that's your bend that's the what gets you the best results you just set your model up that way yes I, I i like that and i i think that's what people need and like you said some people don't need it they just want a quick check-in so you just kind of you know you adjust for every individual and some people, boy, they really need it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And some people want a little bit of information. Other people want a ton of information. Yes. Right. Different exactly. personalities. And, you know, as FDNers, we teach them how to take care of themselves. That's the goal. Some people don't want to know that. They just want to know what to do to get better. Okay. And some people, you're right, they want to know everything. So, you know, and that's what I do. I, I teach them how to take care of themselves. That's the goal. Yep. And because True. if you do that with somebody, that's you know that's a bunch more clients for you down the road. Hmm. So because you got real educated clients. Yeah, and they're going to refer you. They're going to yep. say, "Hey, yep. you need to talk to this person," and shoot up by email. Yeah. Yep, I agree. I, I agree with that totally. It's uh, we're kind of working ourselves out of a job in some way, or become less and less needed yeah. because we're it we're is. teaching them. They're you know, like, here's what I know. I, yeah, right. It, it is, but I don't look at it that way because I, what I look at it is is if I'm successful with a person, that's multiple clients that are going to come from that person's referral. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So that, exactly. That's what happens. Yeah. That's Results exactly bring referrals. Happens. People. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where it comes from. That's the biggest source of uh, business for me is it's all, so far it's all been referred. I haven't had a text at all. It's just you, you're successful and it starts slow, but, but it exponentially grows. And, mm. you know, two turns into four, turns into eight, turns into 16, and et cetera, et cetera. And off it goes. Yeah. Glad you said that too for you guys out there that's just starting out. And maybe it's a little slower than you want it to be. It's sticking with it. I think you're seeing a theme. I think a theme, the theme I see with you, Dan, is just that you're just, you're consistent. You just stay with yes. it, whatever you're doing. Like three years to get off of a medication, you know, taking years to get to the point where you are right now in your health and also in your business. It's just sticking with it, remaining consistent, trying to get better, do things better, treat people properly, yeah. and and get good results. And it's going to pay off eventually. But you're right, it can take some yeah. time, but it will start to really get it rolling soon. That's when it gets really fun. And then you better have your that system is. set up <laughs> to accommodate that's all right. these people. And that, that's what happened to me is I, my systems were, you know, they were good, but they weren't perfect. Well, they are not perfect now. There's no such thing. But, but get them set up right from the start, be organized, and uh, you'll be playing catch up later. <laughs> that's no fun. Yes, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> yep. So, so you're just you, you don't really do any 
I guess you, you're teaching, but you're not going out there doing a lot of public speaking or internet marketing and advertising. Really, you built just no, based on your referrals. That's about to change. So that with the website. So um, yes. I have a web person who's going to do social marketing and whatnot, and then I have people I'm mentoring so I can duplicate myself and uh, refer clients to them because I can't do everybody. So um, right. yeah, that's. But you can do it without it too. Just by, like I've done it, you can. Anybody can. But you know, another piece of advice too is, Brandon, be yourself. You know, don't try to be anybody else, because people are going to like you for who you are, the type of person you are, what you have to bring, and uh, bring your own dent to it. And that because that way you're going to get the clients that you want to work with. Not everybody's going to like you. you know, there's going to be some people that just it's not going to work. Let them go. That's you know, and somebody else might be a good practitioner for that. That's okay. Yep. But be yep. you. Be who you are. Mm. Another excellent point. Love, love hearing that. That is, that's very true. And that's that's it's the easiest to be you. Also, it's really hard to be somebody yes, else. It is. <laughs> You're going to get worn yeah. out. <laughs> right. No comparison. So the way yep. I painted that picture in a class recently, when somebody asked me that, it was. And I can't remember what the question specifically was, but if you have 10 artists and I ask them to paint the park, now every artist, they're brilliant artists, right? And every artist paints the park from the same spot. They all come up with a different painting, but every painting is a nice painting, right? Mm -hmm. Then you put those paintings in a gallery and people walk through the gallery. Now people are going to be attracted to that one and not this one, and certain people are going to be attracted to this one and not that one. So if you're 100% you and authentic, um, you're going to attract the people that you need to attract, and and um, it'll work out for you. Mm, excellent point. Very good. Well, we've got, a, we've got about seven minutes or so left in the show here. Dan, If I, I'm going to throw it out here. If you're okay with it, I'm going to ask the audience if they have any questions for you. Do you mind answering some questions if somebody... No, Want to be brave enough? Yeah, go for it. Okay, sure. Okay. I see a lot of you guys on the line there. If you have a question for, for Dan, I'm sure he's happy to answer that. Um, he's got an awesome story. I really super enjoyed hearing his story and experience there. So if you guys have a question, um, just hit one on your keypad there. You'll pop up, and I'll see your, your area code, and I'll be able to, to bring you on. That number, if you want to call in, is 347 637 1378. So again, now your chance to talk with with Dan here as we have to finish up the call. Um, so Dan's Dan's website there. So it's gonna be coming up here uh, really soon. Sounds like I'm excited for what you're doing. Dan uh, definitely had coming from a place of knowledge and uh, love and concern and and heart. So um, it's kind of neat to hear your story, you know, and then come into what you're doing right now with this business. But uh, so optimalherbal.com. So you guys make sure. Keep checking back there. I don't know if it's up yet or not, but uh, we'll not yet. Guys, uh, don't keep, We're days not yet. Away. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Get to go live. It's a fun time. So yeah. Super cool. Super cool. All right. And you guys brave out there? No, not today. They're just all listening, uh, sitting, uh, standing on every word there. So, all right. So, yeah. well, Dan, any any last thoughts here for um, for us? You know, practitioners out there, or even going through the course? Anything else you? Maybe wanted to add to what you've already said. Um, good job for uh, for signing up and doing this brave work because it is brave. Um, being an unlicensed practitioner, now if you you know if you go to school and you get a license and or you already have one, that's great. Um, I'm unlicensed, so you know I don't just hang a shingle up and people come, um, right? And that, from a business perspective, is scary. Um, so what I would encourage is to just be solid in your knowing and um, learn everything you can and stick with it. And you'll help if you stick to the foundational protocols that you're learning in FDN. That's who we're talking to here. Um, you will help a lot of people. I know that. Mm -hmm. And that will, if for, like I said before, every person you help, that will turn into more clients for you in the future. Yep. Amen to that, Dan. Appreciate all that wisdom, um, years of years of wisdom, really, you're putting down for us. And uh, it's encouraging to me, and uh, you're doing awesome work. So appreciate you being on the call today. 
Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be the call for today, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. And uh, we will not be on next week. That's uh, Thanksgiving week, so you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Um, we've got a lot to be grateful for. I know we can complain about a lot of things in this world, but uh, a whole lot to be grateful for. So, guys, count your blessings. Uh, speak those out. Write those out. That's an important thing to do. And uh, it will shift your mindset, and uh, you'll find solutions to things you have problems with if we kind of shift your mindset onto uh, what you've got going already. And... Uh, it works. It works good. So shift your mindset. You guys have a great weekend, a good Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll talk to you the week after. Talk to you guys later. Take care, Brandon.